around. It's just, it's so nice. It's so pleasant. It's one of the best things I can think of. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's priceless. You know, a half hour of that. I mean, how much is that worth? You know, interesting. How much is, you know, how much would you sell that for? I mean, I'd probably sell it for a lot of money, but a half hour of that would more. Of course it would, but, you know, it's worth Jesus Christ. Oh, you know, talking about testing people, like hitting probably with the book. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I know a DP. I may have told you this. Uh, he worked for a long time with um, some New York director, uh, shit, Ferraro. Ferrara. Ah, Abel. Abel Ferrara. Abel Ferrara. Yeah, he worked with him for quite a while. Until they had a bad argument, and Ferrara was going to claim that he knew a bunch of mob guys, and he was going to have him, this guy killed, his DP killed. and, and Oh, this, this DOP. D, director of photography. And the, the only thing I can I can mention is, is he did the, he was a DP on the Good Lieutenant. You know, do you ever see that? Bad Lieutenant. Harvey Keitel. Yes. And uh, uh, he was in Special Forces. And and uh, the first time we met, uh, it was the second year I went to Sturgis. And the second year I went, uh, first year I went by myself. For the you know just take notes. Second year I went with ten other people from Hollywood, you know, film crew, to just film stuff, background stuff, you know. And this guy was there as as yeah, I guess he was the DP, and and you know he just took the gig and and I I, I we had to meet at the LAX, the airport, you know, and and, and I was probably hungover, you know. And, you know to the airport and you're all these other people and here's this guy uh, uh, Ken and 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 when two special forces guys get to, who are strangers first of all they think is this guy really was he really in special forces or is he full of shit and and it's like two dogs sniffing their assholes you know, to try to figure. But he knew I, you know, he kind of knew I was, right? And you, you, you can tell pretty quick because there are little details that that if you weren't in the in it, you wouldn't know, right? Just little details that aren't important, you know. And and he was telling me, yeah, I read your book, it, you know, and and he didn't say. I don't think he even said it was okay or anything. But he said. I, they, it could, the ending couldn't have happened that way. And I said, well, yeah, it could have. Where the radio, he calls artillery on the Americans. And I said, yeah, it could happen. I mean, nah. But I'm thinking, well, fuck you, you know, fuck you. So we fly to, to this place. We had to live, a, oh, 100 miles from Sturgis because it was the 50th anniversary and there was nowhere to stay. Okay. And so we lived in, 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 in North Dakota just over the border in a, in this little, nowhere, the town was so quiet. There was a little airstrip. We, we flew to, to um, uh, Rapid City. And then, then we drove to the, no, no, we, we, we uh, yeah, I guess that's right. And then we, then we got a, some kind of little airplane to this little teeny airport in this town that wasn't even a town. And it was so quiet, to, you know. But then, every, but then every once in a while, way in the distance, you'd hear this, and it's motorcycles on the way to Sturgis, right? And and but it was a, the only place we closest we could find, they, whoever did it, could find a motel where we could all stay, and all it was was like, a boardwalk, about this high, you know, a boardwalk like a sidewalk, but it was made out of boards, and so you were raised up. And, and on one side of the boardwalk, door, 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 door for each room. And uh, 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 I actually, I should, I need to be out of the truck to 
Mm. Okay. Mm. 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 Mm.